Oh, Rabba Kashata Namahanda. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. We bless your holy name. We magnify you, Heavenly Father. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. I worship you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in this place, O oh God. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Hakuna mungu kama wewe. Ni wewe. Wakuabudiwa ni wewe. Hallelujah. Ni wewe. Wakuabudiwa ni wewe. Wakupewa sifa. Na utukufu na heshima ni wewe Mwenye nguvu na uweza ni wewe Hallelujah ni wewe Wakuabudiwa ni wewe Ni wewe ni wewe Wakuabudiwa ni wewe Hallelujah Wakupewa sifa na utukufu na heshima ni wewe Mwenye nguvu na uweza ni wewe Father we give you glory we give you praise, O oh Lord. We give you worship. We give you adoration. We magnify your holy name. Great is your mercy, Jehovah. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh Lord, my Father, tunakushukuru mtakatifu. Bwana wa mabwana, mfalme wa wafalme, umetukuka, umeinuliwa, sifa na utukufu ni zako. Wewe ni mwema haufana nishwi. O oh, Rabba Shata na Mahanda, Riba Katoria Rinae Rakuba Shia Ratoria, Pokea Sifa na Heshima na Guvu na Uwezo na Mamlaka, Wewe Watosha Mfalme wa Rehema, Hakuna Mungu Mwingine Alie Kama Wewe, Hakuna Guvu Kama Zako Bwana wa Majeshi, Father we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you adoration, we magnify your name O oh Lord, we declare that you are the Lord, and that beside you, Lord, there is no Savior. O oh, God of heaven, we magnify your name. We praise your name. We worship you, Jehovah. Rabba Shatana Mahanda. Raka Pashatana Maganda. We give you honor, Lord. We worship you, Jehovah. Father, we enthrone you in the name of Jesus. We enthrone you in every situation of our lives. We enthrone you, O oh Lord. In every situation of our lives, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we give you adoration, we magnify your holy name. O oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, unastahili sifa na utukufu, wewe ni bwana wa mabwana, wewe ni mungu wa miungu, wewe ni msaada wa karibu, hakuna mungu alie kama wewe. O oh Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you because of this opportunity to minister your word. We give you glory, Lord. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. O oh God of heaven, tunakushukuru mfalme wa rehema, tunasema wa stahili, hakuna mungu mwingine alie kama wewe. Fadhili zako ni za milele. O raka bazoka na mahanda. Riko pasori ya rinae rakutari mazaya. Rika pashata na maganda. We give you glory, we give you praise. We give you adoration. Lord, we give you honor. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. I bless your holy name. Pokea sifa na heshima. Oh yes, we continue to bless the Lord for what he has done for us today. We continue to thank God because he has made us the remnants of this COVID-19. And we are going to see tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. Oh hallelujah, we bless the Lord. We magnify the Lord, we glorify the Lord. 
we declare that the Lord is good, he is mighty, he is awesome, he is great, there is none like him. Oh, Father, we worship you, Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you adoration, we magnify your name. Thank you, Father, for what you have done. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your goodness. Oh, Rakabashatana Mahanda. Reka Prabashiri Bazia Rakota. Father, we worship you. We praise your name. We magnify your name. There is none like you. You deserve all the glory. You are worthy to be praised and to be exalted and to be honored. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are good and your mercies and you are forever. Pokea sifa na utukufu. Na heshima na uwezo na mamlaka. Endelea kumshukuru buwana. Endelea kumuambia buwana anastahili. Litukuze jina lake. Muambie ni mungu matendo yako ya tisha ya tisha kama nini. Asanti buwana kwa sababu wewe uko katika ushukani. Lord you are in control. You are in control. Laboshete rabozia rakobasoka. Reka pasaya radebazia. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Unastahili Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Jehovah. We glorify your holy name. Great is thy faithfulness. There is none like you. There is no power like thine. Oh, hallelujah. Wewe waweza buwana wa majeshi. Wewe watosha mfalme wa wafalme. Wewe ni mungu mkuu. Wewe ni mtakatifu. Wewe ni kimbilio letu. Hakuna mungu mwingine alie kama wewe. Oh, Lord, you are good and your mercies and yours forever. Great is thy faithfulness. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jehovah. We magnify you, King of all the glory. There is none like you, Jesus. There is no power like thine. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be glorified. Oh, Lord, there is none like you. Unastahili sifa na utukufu. Unastahili heshima na uweza na guvu na mamlaka. Wewe unatosha, wewe ni mugu mku, wewe ni muaminifu. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. I give you all the glory. We worship you. Yes, let me know whether you can see us from that end in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We magnify you. We give you all the glory. Shara baganda rika bazoka. We give you honor, Lord. We come into your presence. Father, we adore you. Father, we lift your name on high. Thank you, my brother Jogona. I can see you, my good brother. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can share this video. You can tag friends in the name of Jesus. We are going to have a powerful session in the mighty name of Jesus as we... Thank you, my brother. Uh, wise Nyaga, I can see you mtumishi wa mungu, rakaba, zoka na mahande. We are going to experience a mighty outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. We are here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to learn and to hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. Riba, sharaba, zoka na mahanda, raba, zoka. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you glory. Thank you for what you are doing. Wewe ni baba. Wewe ni baba yangu. Wewe ni baba. Wewe ni baba yangu. Hakuna, hakuna. Hakuna kama wewe baba yangu hakuna 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 kama wewe yes we are expecting from the lord in the mighty name of jesus and because i know that i've been late for some few minutes i want us to pray uh, so that i can go right into the word of the living god and I know that God is going to do great things. God is going to change your life. God is going to touch you in a special way. 
and uh, I thank God for what he is doing tonight. Let us pray for the ministration of the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you because of this opportunity, my Father, to broadcast your word on this platform. Father, I want to thank you because of this time. Thank you because of everyone, my brother and my sister who is watching on the other end. I give you glory, Father, because you are going to touch them. You are going to change their lives. You are going to lift them from one glory to another. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what you are going to do. I invite your presence everywhere, my Father. The listener is, my Father, we know that there is no distance in the spirit world. I speak the presence of God. I speak the power of God wherever you are. I release in the name of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hallelujah the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of god i pray that this word will enlighten you i pray in the name of the lord jesus christ that this word will open your, your eyes in the mighty name of jesus that from today you will never see things the same again hallelujah father i give you praise i give you glory i adore you my redeemer you are great and you are awesome you are mighty jehovah you are the king of kings you are the king of kings my god oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good for his mercies endureth forever oh give thanks unto the god of gods for his mercies endureth forever who alone doeth great wonders for his mercies endureth forever i take authority in the name of jesus over the airwaves in the mighty name of jesus i take authority over the every media in the mighty name of jesus i subdue every force of darkness in the mountain of media that is contrary to the word of God under my feet now in the mighty name of Jesus I declare that the power of God the anointing of the Holy Spirit the grace of God now goes hallelujah changes lives in Jesus name that the sick are going to be healed that those who are downcast are going to be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus, that those who are broken hearted are going to be lifted up. Those who have reached their end in the name of Jesus, I declare that today is a day of a new beginning. I declare those who are feeling uh, uh, distraught, those who are feeling hopeless, that today in the name of Jesus, that their hope is going to revive again. I declare and decree in the mighty name of Jesus, those my father who are being challenged in life, you are going to turn their challenges into testimonies by the power of faith my god father i bless your name i magnify your name and it is in the name of the lord jesus christ we pray and give glory i thank god for you and i bless the name of the lord because of giving us this opportunity to share the word of god together i am pastor ruben duo uh on facebook and also on youtube you can uh uh, subscribe and follow us on on those channels i'm sharing and ministering online in jesus name the lord has given me a ministry to teach the word of god to the church so that we can know uh god better so that our eyes our spiritual eyes can open and so that we can know what we need to do to get the results that we desire i welcome you all in the name of jesus i want to thank you uh, because of uh, listening to this video, you can share it with your friends, you can tag others so that we continue to spread the word of God. Thank you for all those who are sharing. I can see Lisa Isaac. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for all those who are following. Uh, Pastor Ken Wise Wise Nyaga. Glory be to God, my brother. You are quite a blessing. May God bless you. May God extend your coast. May God elevate you to another level. May God make your dreams come true in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, I minister in Nairobi industry area at uh, Mukuru Kwa Ruben industry area. And also we have churches uh, every, uh, somewhere in Pipeline and also in another village in the industry area called Kingston. Uh, we thank God for you because you are following us. I want to bring a very uh, challenging uh, yet very important topic today. Characteristics of Bible faith. Characteristics of Bible faith. Now, uh, this topic is a bit uh, 
challenging and very confusing because as I continue to share, you are going to learn that uh, the word of God is the source of true faith and the word of God is the source of genuine Bible faith. And what I want you to understand, my friend, my brother, my sister, is that in this kingdom, it is impossible to live in the kingdom of God without faith. It is impossible to walk the walk of uh, faith or the walk of salvation without faith. Because the Bible says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we walk by faith, not by sight. So you understand that the walk that we walk in, we can only walk by faith. Also, the Bible says in Habakkuk 2, verse 4, that the just shall live by faith. That tells you that without faith you are dead. Without faith you cannot live the life that God has ordained for you. I'm going to give you 10 points that we will show you the characteristics of Bible faith. Faith is not something to be played around with, my friend. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to this uh, subject. Faith is not something to joke around with. When you read the Bible, especially in Hebrews chapter 11, and you read the Gospels, and you see the things that faith generated. You see that uh, the, the people that Jesus were healing, the Bible says that Jesus would tell them, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Re uh, remember, Jesus was not telling them, My faith as Jesus has made you whole. He was telling them, Your faith in me, your faith in God has made you whole. What do I want to say? I want to say that it is faith. It is the hand of faith that only can receive from the basket of God. If God passes by your place with a basket full of blessings, if you don't have this hand of faith, you are not going to get any of the blessings. And I believe that God is going to bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, maybe I can start by telling you what faith is not, so that you understand what is faith. Uh, I say number one, the first point, characteristics of Bible faith, is that uh, faith is a nina conviction of a spiritual reality. Faith is a nina conviction of a spiritual reality. I also tell people that faith is the 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 the, 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 the conviction that spiritual things are real. This is very powerful, my friend. Faith is a conviction that spiritual things are real. When God says he has sent his angels to keep guard over you, it is a conviction that that is a truth. It is not an imagination. So we say that faith is not an imagination. Faith is not an assumption. Faith is not just an imagination. You don't, uh, some people say, I imagine myself driving. Well, it's good to imagine because uh, there is a place where God has given us an imagination. But you have to understand that you can imagine yourself driving and die without even buying a bicycle. Because faith is not a mere ima mental imagination. Faith is not of the soul. I mean, you have to understand the soul is the, 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 the faculty that has the mind the will and the emotions, where we have the feelings. So faith, genuine Bible faith, originates from the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. We say that faith is the sixth sense because a human being has five common senses. The five, the five common senses, you know them. What you can taste, what you can smell, what you can touch, what you can see and what you can hear. Faith is above that realm. Faith is above the ordinary cannot dimension. Faith is the sixth sense. It sees things that you cannot perceive uh, uh, with, your, with, your, with your senses. I want to read the scripture in Hebrews 11 verse 1 in the Amplified Bible to prove my point that genuine faith is a Nina heart conviction. It is not even mental assent. What is mental assent? Mental assent is, if I ask you, do you believe that God heals? And you tell me, yes, pastor, I believe that God heals. But then maybe, and God forbid, tomorrow you fall ill with malaria. You said you agree with, in your head that God heals. But when you fall ill, you cannot stand with that faith and claim your healing. That's what I mean. Faith is not a mental ascent. Faith is an inner conviction. Faith originates from the heart. Oh, I have a lot to say about faith. May God help me. Uh, I am feeling the fire of God is coming down. Listen, 
Hebrews 11.1, 1, Amplified Bible. The Bible says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things uh, we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. And then it puts into brackets, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. That has a lot to tell you what faith is. I said faith is not an imagination. The scripture has said that faith is an assurance. Faith is a conviction. Actually, the writer of the, Hebrew, the Bible says faith is, a, is the title deed. You know, when you have the title deed to, to, a, to, to a piece of land, even if someone goes and builds on that piece of land, you know that the land belongs to you notwithstanding what is happening on that ground you know you can go to a court of law and challenge whoever is building on that piece of land because you hold the legal document now faith is the legal document that comes into your spirit or in your heart to convince you and to give you the confidence that you actually have what you were praying for even before that thing has come and faith is so powerful, my friend. I pray that you may know how powerful faith is. And as you follow this teaching, you are going to know that faith is a great, faith is a great lesson. Jesus uh, uh, did not tell us that we should understand God. He told the, the man Jairus, he told him, only believe, be not afraid, only believe. That means that we, God does not, does not tell us to understand how he is going to perform a miracle. God does not tell you to start to think how he is going to raise you from the dust and you sit with the princes. What God tells you is to only believe, have faith in God. Now, that is the, 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 the most outstanding characteristic of Bible faith. Number one, that faith is not... An imagination. Faith is not mental assent, my friend. I can ask you, do you believe that God can save you from uh, COVID-19? And you tell me yes. But do you have the inner conviction that COVID-19 is not your portion? Man is a spirit which has a soul and lives in a body. And you have to understand these three parts in order for you to understand the New Testament. And now the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 10, For with the heart man believeth. So I told you faith is not in the mind. Faith happens in the heart. There is a difference. Your heart is your spirit. Man is a spirit. Your spirit is your heart. The Bible says elsewhere. It confirms that. Also your spirit is called your inner man. The inner man or the hidden man of the heart in the book of us peter now faith originates from your from your heart now let me go to the second definition of faith because i said that faith is not mental assent it is a heart conviction that you have what god says you have that you are what god says you are maybe you don't look like you are blessed but faith is the conviction that you are blessed even if outwardly you look like you are not blessed you look like you don't have anything faith is that conviction but let us now differentiate between faith and imagination the second point is that genuine bible faith is proof producing genuine bible faith is proof producing because everyone can say i believe that god will heal me now, the proof that what you have is faith is the healing that comes. The practical healing itself is what proves to you that what you have is faith. It was not mental assent. Remember, Im an imagination cannot heal you. But faith is, a, faith is a force, is a spiritual force that takes control of all the other forces of nature, of the natural and of the supernatural. So we say that faith takes control of the natural faith has the power to change the protocols of nature faith has the power to change the laws of nature faith has the power that is why jesus was walking on the water 
and we know that there is a law of gravity that dictates that if you step on water you are going to go down the law of buoyancy that is science but when peter believed he asked Jesus, if it is you, just tell me to come. And the Bible says when Peter believed, he launched out of the boat and he started walking on the water. So you have to understand that faith can change natural laws. The doctor can tell you that this cancer cannot be healed because that is a, that is a fact. But faith can change facts into truth. There is more power in a truth than fact because a fact is a natural thing. But Timias was blind. That was a fact. He was not pretending. But now, faith changed that fact. Faith changed the fact of his blindness. Lazarus was dead, four days dead, and he was decomposing. But when he applied faith, he changed the fact. When Jesus commanded him to come out, he really came out. Blessed Kenya, I can see you. God bless you. Faith has power to change your facts, my brother. And this is what makes faith the most prominent subject of the New Testament. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. Without it, you cannot deal with God. I want to let you know, my brother, my sister, that God is not moved by tears. God is not moved by fasting. God is not moved by a sacrifice. God is only moved by faith in his word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Now, what do I mean? It is good to fast, it is good to pray, it is good to cry if you feel like crying before the Lord. But if you don't have faith that what you are crying for is going to come. You... Sorry, sorry for that interruption. You are, you are, your faith is going to be in vain. So I want to say that uh, faith can change your situation. Faith can change your situation. Faith can turn around the facts. A doctor can tell you now you have high blood pressure and you are going to live with that condition forever. But if you believe in the word of God and stick to it that by the stripes I am healed, you are going to receive your healing. That is why I said genuine Bible faith is proof producing. Number three, it says that Genuine Bible faith guarantees results. So if you are not getting results in any area of your life, that is the proof that you don't have faith in that area. It is when you command results. If you are believing God for your finances, you have to get the results. And please, I'm, uh, the reason why I'm teaching this is because we have been so confused, such that sometimes we think we are believing and we are not believing. Faith is not mental assent. Faith is a conviction that commands results any day, any time, anywhere. I'm teaching you this and I have lived it, my friends. I have lived Bible faith to come command sicknesses out of my body and out of the bodies of other people who believed the word of God. And faith is the only ingredient that God looks at. I said God does not, God is not moved by fasting for 40 days. I know you can fast for 40 days and you don't have faith. Just listen to people when they are praying. They pray great things. Father, I believe that I am going to break through. This is the year of God's favor, especially when we are jumping the year. When the crossover is there, people prophesy great things. Oh, this is my year. This is the year of breakthrough. This is the year of grace. But immediately after that, January comes and the sun is there, you know, scorching you. And you begin to say, oh, I don't know now this year. This is the hardest year of my life. I lost my job. You would see, faith does not rest on the facts. It rests on the truth. If you heard from God that this is your year of breakthrough, you stick to that until that breakthrough comes. That is what I'm calling results. Genuine Bible faith commands results. First John 5.14 The Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So we know that we have the, it says in verse 15, And if we know that he heareth us, then we know that we have the things that we desired of him. And if you read the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, 
from verse 32. You see the men who had faith commanded proofs. They had proof. They had the results. It says, and what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Samson, of Barak, of Samson, of Gideon, of Jephthah, and of David also, and of Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Those are results. Raft righteousness, obtained promises, closed or stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, the three Hebrew boys, and ex escaped the edge of the sword. It says, out of weakness they were made strong. Bible faith is proof producing. May God give you the grace to access this Bible faith. I'm going to show you how to access it. And then it says that the, the, the women received their dead, raised to life again. That is the proof that Bible faith commands results. If you are believing God for your finances, you have to see the results. If you are believing God that you are going to come out of debt, you have to see yourself coming out of debt. Otherwise, everyone can claim I'm believing God. It is until you see the results that you know what you have is faith. You have heard of these churches and religions that say we don't go to hospital, we don't believe in medicine. But then they die in their houses. They get sick and they die in their, in their beds of sickness. That proves that is religious faith. That is why I'm teaching characteristics of Bible faith. So that you don't confess, confuse Bible faith with uh, what we call religious faith. The point number four is what I'm saying. Genuine Bible faith is the major assignment that God has given to humanity. There, please, my friend, there is no any other assignment in this kingdom greater than believing God. The only assignment that God has given us is to believe him. And the only thing that pleases God the most is to be believed. And the only thing that breaks the heart of God most and angers God most is to be doubted by us. That is why I'm telling you that faith is the major assignment. I'm going to give you uh, scriptures. John 6 verse 28. The Bible says the, the Pharisees or whoever was there asked Jesus, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? John 6, 28, verse 29. Jesus told them, This is the work of God. We have been thinking that the word of God is to go out there and tell people to be saved. Well and good. You can tell people to be saved. I have been there, but you don't even believe they can receive Jesus. I was in that position. I was a preacher. I would preach to people's salvation and then I would call an altar call. But in my mind, I knew. No one will come out. But when I changed that and I believed that, the Holy Spirit will convict them and they will give their lives to Jesus. When I believed it, it happened. That's why I'm saying the greatest work God has given humanity is to believe God. It says Jesus told them, this is the work of God, that you may believe on him whom he hath sent. That you may believe. So the greatest assignment that God has ever given to humanity is to believe him. Praise the name of the Lord. I also want to say, Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he exists, and that he is a rewarder of they that seek him diligently. I want to say another point that faith is human responsibility. Faith is not God's responsibility. This is very important, my friend. Have you ever heard of this song that uh, we used to sing? Fafa nyongerera, we take you, and you sing it. Ata unazama, oh fafa, baba niogeze imani, oh God, increase my faith. That is the song, that is what it meant. Baba, father, increase my faith. That song is very unbiblical. Because if I give you the keys to a car and you are a driver, and I tell you this is the ignition key, you cannot enter into a car and now tell, begin to tell me, Pastor Ruben, make this car move. Because I already gave you the key. Why is that song unbiblical? Because the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17 that 
now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God already gave you the key to faith. He tells you that faith comes by hearing God. All the men in the Bible who commanded results and miracles heard from God. Moses heard from God before he went to face Pharaoh. If you want to face your challenges, take time to be in the Bible. Take time to listen to the word of God. Take time to meditate on the word of God. That is the only way that you are going to hear from God and get faith. Faith comes only by hearing, not by prayer. By the way, you are not the first person to pray that prayer. This is Luke 17 verse 5. It says, And the apostles said unto Jesus, Increase our faith. So you would think that Jesus would have told them, Raise your hands and I'm going to lay hands on you and you are going to receive faith. But then the Bible says in verse 6, Jesus told them, If you had faith, that is what I'm saying. Faith is human and personal responsibility. It is not God's responsibility because Jesus told them, it is not about me adding you faith. It is about if you had it, if you knew how to get it. Another proof of our scripture is Mark 9, verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, uh, the, the, the man who had an epileptic child said unto Jesus, if thou canst do anything, Help us. You see, he was putting the responsibility on Jesus. And that is what we do. We put the responsibility of answering prayers to God. But God wants us to know that it is our faith that moves the hand of God to work on your behalf. Anyway, the power of God is everywhere in the world. It waits for the switch of faith to turn it on into any situation. So if you have faith, you are going to command results. You are going to turn the switch on. Jesus did not help him the way he wanted because he told Jesus, if you can do something, help us. But Jesus told him, if you can believe, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. What a scripture. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Jesus told him, it is not, I don't have a problem healing your child. I don't have a problem because he had told Jesus, if you can do anything. And most of the times we are wondering about the ability of God. The problem is not God's ability. The problem is your ability to believe him, that he is able. Whosoever cometh to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder, that God answers prayers. The other point is that uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That is in 1 John 5, 4. The Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even mm -hmm. our faith. So what does that tell you? Faith is the victory. In order for you to overcome, understand here, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. But now you are told, even if you are born again, you are born of the spirit. You are born of the word. You are born of blood. What ingredient gives you that victory? That is why just by being born again, that is one ingredient. But there is another ingredient. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Many people drown in the sea of troubles of the world. Many people are drowning in the sea of sin and iniquity of the world. But the Bible says faith is the victory that overcomes the world. You know our Christian fight is the fight of faith. And the, the reason why it is a fight of faith, First Timothy 6, 12, says fight the good fight of faith. It is a fight of faith. Why is it a fight? Because our faith is being opposed by other forces. The three main forces, we call them the world. The world, the, 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 the world, the flesh, and the devil. Those are the three forces that oppose faith. The world, you know, the systems of the world are, are not faith-based. That is why if a doctor tells you, you have this tumor and you tell him, I'm not going to go to the theater, I will go and pray and fast and confess the word of God, they cannot understand unless they are born again and spirit-filled and really are in that channel. Because the faith ranges, faith, registers nothing in the human mind. 
by the one to tell you that faith is what the carnal mind registers as nothing, registers as absurdity and foolishness and ignorance. That is why men of faith has been seen to be like fanatics, mad people. David was, had no experience whatsoever in battles, but he said, I'm going to face Goliath. Saul was trying to bring him back into the kind of mind. He was trying to bring him back into the kind of mentality. He was, trying to, he was trying to tell him, now you see, Goliath has been a fighter since he was a youth and you just came from the bushes. But David had faith in God. He said, the God of Israel, will you give me the head of this uncircumcised Philistine. So you see, faith is the victory that overcomes the world, the flesh, and the devil. Some people have really challenge, challenges in their flesh, in the, uh, uh, the, what the Bible calls the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes. But the Bible shows you if you would confess the word of God and believe that Jesus has done all that he could have done to save you from sin. Confess Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. The Bible says, uh, now sin shall not have dominion over us, for we are not under the law but under the, under the grace. One of the expressions of Bible faith is by your mouth. I, I told you that faith originates from your heart. Faith is an inner conviction of your heart. But now when you believe it, it says, For with the heart man believeth. Romans 10 verse 9 and 10. For with the heart, Romans 10 10, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. So faith originates from the heart, but you have to confess what you believe. The Bible says about the woman who had the issue of blood in Matthew 9.21, For she said to herself, If I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. You read Mark 5 and the Bible says, For she said, If I touch the hem of his garment. So I tell people, because this is the truth that faith is what you say naturally. Yes, you can go to Akesha and pray and rebuke demons and bind them. But when you come into the natural, you know, you, when you are not under inspiration, what do you say? Do you say now, Kumeharibika, things are bad, the economy is bad? That is your faith. What you say naturally is your faith. People of faith confess God's faith even in the midst of challenges. Because I said in another platform that faith is believing that the word of God is true even in the face of a contrary evidence. Because the Bible says about Abraham in Romans chapter 4 from verse 19 down. When Abraham considered that he was past a hundred years and when he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, actually the Bible said he did not consider all that. He only considered the fact that God had promised him a son. The Bible says that he fixed his eyes on the promise of God. So faith does not rest on what you are seeing. This is very important, my friend. The doctor could have given you all the reports that you know. Praise the Lord, Pastor John Mwangi. The doctor could have told you, people can tell you you are not going anywhere. They can even, you know, sometimes even the devil formulates a situation to prove to you that you are, you, are, you are dead. You are not going anywhere. Faith is what you see beyond your common senses. Come on now. I said faith is the sixth sense. Faith is what you see beyond what you are hearing. David heard that Goliath had fought since he was a youth. David could see this giant which was between 9 and 11 feet tall. But the faith in his heart told him, the God of heaven will bring this down. Run to it. Faith is the proof that you bank on the word of God. Unless you, 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 you pro, pro, portray faith, God doesn't believe that you believe in the things that are in the Bible. The Bible can tell you, bring ye all the tithes, and I, God, will open you the windows of heaven. I will remove thugs and thieves and losses out of your business but the proof that you have faith is obedience so we say that genuine bible faith 
must be accompanied by obedience. Because James said, faith without works is dead. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, I'm going to read because I'm around there. And this is Hebrews 11 verse, uh, verse 8. The Bible says, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive as an inheritance, mark this, obeyed. When Abraham was called by God to go out, he obeyed, he did it. God can tell you, I, I am able to throw open the windows of heaven and bless you until your blessings overtake you. But the proof that you believe he can do it is your submission of your tithes to your pastor, to your church. Stop arguing about the word of God, my friend. Stop arguing whether giving works or not. You practice it and see the results. God said in, in the whole of the Bible, give and it shall be given, Luke 6, 38. Cast your bread upon the waters. The proof that you believe that if you cast your bread upon the waters, it shall return unto you many more folds, many times as you are giving. So every time we are not giving, I included, pastors included, I have seen pastors who don't tithe and they call people to bring their tithes. Pastor, you are operating what we call the law of double standards. Remember the word of God is a double-edged sword. It doesn't say only members should tithe. Even the Levites were tithing the tithe of the tithes that they received to the high priest. So even if you are a pastor and you are not a giver, your ministry is going to struggle throughout the years because the law of faith demands you obey the word of God. If you believe God is going to bless your ministry, begin to tithe the tithe of your offerings to another ministry or to your headquarters if you have that system or whatever system you follow. Tithe your tithes. So because if you are not tithing pastor, you are going to struggle, I'm telling you. So I want to say that the, the, the proof that you believe God is your obedience. Abraham, when he was told in Genesis 22, take your son, your only son whom thou lovest, and go and offer him. The Bible says he went out and he began to do it. He, he called uh, uh, Isaac and the servants and he took a donkey and he started moving the next morning. The proof that you believe God is in your obedience. All this time we are saying, I believe God answers prayer. I believe fasting works. If you are not fasting, you don't believe in it. Do you know that the reason why we don't pray is because we don't even believe that prayer works. Most people think that prayer operates on the law of trial and error. Nikama nikarata tunacheza. It's like you are, we are playing, you know, what we call trial and error. God is not a gambler. Faith is believing that the word of God is true. Faith is not uh, this uh, spot pesa things and the, the, the gambling. No. Faith is not patapotea. Faith is not trial and error. Faith is the guarantee that if I tithe, God will open me the windows of heaven and you expect him to honor his word. God will remove losses from my business because I'm a faithful tither. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. He said in Malachi 3.12, I will raise you above all. He said, and all nations shall call you blessed. That the proof you believe he can make you you know, the, the, way, the envy of the nations is in your obedience. If you believe God can heal you, stand by that word. Stand by that word. Confess by his stripes I'm healed. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Lay your, if, God, if Jesus said in Mark 16, we can lay hands on sick and they recover in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your belly. Declare this problem of my belly. I command it to live in the name of Jesus. Read Mark 16, 15, it says, In my name, go ye into the world, then he Sorry, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, In my name shall they cast out demons. In my name. In my name. So in the name of Jesus, if you have a headache, I saw someone said they had a headache. Lay your hands now on your head. And now in the name of Jesus, I command that headache to live now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the name of Jesus cannot miss it. It is the power. The power is in the name of Jesus. And if you have faith in the name of Jesus, you are going to see results. If your child develops fever in the night, 
before you call a taxi. This is a, just a simple thing. Lay your hands on your child. Command fever to leave in the name of Jesus. You would rather repeat in the name of Jesus, fever go 20 times. And after a few times, you begin to thank God. Because faith believes that God has heard you and he, is, he has answered your prayer even before you see the results. That is what the Bible says in Mark chapter 11 and verse, this is verse 20, 24. The Bible says, what things soever you shall uh, desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Let me take you back. When you pray, at the point when you are praying, believe that you have received them, the King James said, and you shall have them. So understand the receiving, the believing that you receive comes first, then the having comes later. The problem why we don't operate Bible faith is that we want to believe that I am healed when the pain stops. No, you believe you are healed even when you are attacked by a cold. Even when the pain is there, you say, Father, I thank you because I have prayed and I believe I am healed. And you stick there. You say by his stripes, I am healed. Don't say I will be healed. Faith is saying what God says. God does not say that you will be healed. He said in 1 Peter 2.24, Isaiah 5, uh, 53 verse 5, he said, by whose stripes you were healed. Healed is in the past tense. Matthew 8.17, the Bible says, himself took, took is in the past tense, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. I have used that formula for over 20 years to get healing from any malady, any sickness that has come my way. My way. I have used the word of God to get spiritual immunity because there is a difference between uh, divine healing and divine health. Divine healing is when you fall ill and God heals you. And that is not the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is that you walk in divine health. Divine health is where God, by his word, by your faith, mark my words, by his word and by your faith in his word and by practicing the word of God and doing it, God keeps you free from sicknesses. Divine health is all over in the Bible. The Bible says in, in, in Exodus 15:26, I will take all sickness away from you. That is divine health. He said in Exodus 23, verse 26, and uh, he said, you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your food and your waters and he shall take sickness away from you. He said in Exodus 15, 26, I will not bring you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians. The reason why I give scriptures is because I teach the word. I don't teach anything. I even tell people when they come to me for help. I don't sell water. I don't sell salt. I don't sell you know, soil, I, I don't have anything to give you but the word. If you are not going to believe the word, Pastor Ruben has nothing to help you. I cannot tell, help you in any way. And I am I'm very afraid because uh, the believers of today think that God has another formula to help you by escaping, you know, after you have escaped from the word of God. God has no other for The only medicine that God has given us is the word of God. You believe it, confess it, obey it, do it, walk the word, live the word, you know, think the word, meditate upon the word. That is the, break, the way to break through. That is the way to command the miraculous. Faith comes by hearing the word, not by, 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 by religious and what we call charismatic abracadabra. Your pastor can come and fall you down, but you fall down sick, you wake up sick. Because faith is the conviction that God is a God who honors his word. Faith is only, you know, banking on the word of God. On the word of God. God said, Jesus took my infirmities. Period. That suffices. That is enough to keep you away from all sicknesses. Or I have told people to use that scripture. And people are overcoming high blood pressure, diabetes. People have confessed scriptures and being he have been healed from cancers, many cancers, by just confessing the scriptures. Because he said the word is medicine, Proverbs 4.22, to all your flesh. It is health and medicine to all your flesh. Now, as I wind up, I have a few points. I want to say that faith uh, is the doorway to grace. Faith is the doorway to grace. You know this 
salvation is of grace. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 8, listen, for by grace are you saved through faith. That tells you that faith is the doorway. For by grace are you saved. You are saved by grace, but through faith. So faith is the doorway into grace. So whatever grace you want, you must believe God for it. Why were you not saved before you were saved? Because you had not believed God could save you. You, did, you had not believed that God can take away your, your sins and keep you from sinning. That the same token applies even after you come to Jesus. You can be saved for 50 years in this world and never at once receive divine healing or walk in divine health until you believe it, the grace for healing comes. You can be saved and drowning in debt, in lack, in financial captivity, until you believe what the Bible says concerning money, and you believe it, and you believe to act on the word of God. Faith is believing that the word of God is true. It is the, if you want to operate the grace of financial victory, believe the word of God. Faith is the doorway to any grace that you want in your life. The other point is that faith can handle every problem that the devil throws at mankind. That is Ephesians 6 verse 16. This is very powerful. Faith can handle every problem that the devil throws at humankind. Any problem, be it financial, be it medical, be it psychological, you have no peace, you have depression, be it relationships, you are not in good terms with your husband, with your wife. Whatever problem, be it business, be it ministerial, faith can handle any problem that bedevils humankind. Come on now. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 16, above all, come on now, faith is above all. Taking the shield of, take unto you the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench, underline, all the fiery darts of the devil or the wicked one. So faith handles all the fiery darts of the devil. Everything, every problem that the devil throws at humanity, faith can handle it. Come on. That's why I taught you faith today. This is the thing you need to command the miraculous in your life. We are born again to walk in miracles. Isaiah 8 verse 18. The Bible says, it is I and the children that God has given me. We are for signs and wonders. Come on now. You are born again to command the miraculous. I told you genuine Bible faith commands results. Any area of your life that you do not have results, it means that something is wrong. Something is wrong. You, there is a scripture you have not believed, or if you have believed, you are not obeying. Please, you can fast and pray for a thousand years for financial breakthrough. Not until you obey the laws of kingdom prosperity, the law of tithing, the law of giving, the law of speaking prosperity, the law of obedience, the law of expectation. All these are laws. If you mess around with them, money will not come. <laughs> the law of speaking, even if you are the best tither, and you speak poverty. Mimi ni mefirisika. I don't know. Uh, kumeharibika. Things are bad. I am drowning. Hi biashara naona nitafuga. I will close this business. You are speaking poverty. God cannot give you riches. Mark 11 verse 22. The Bible says you shall have what you say. Mark 11 23. The last line says and you shall have what you say. So if you say my husband ni subua, he will remain like that. Even if you pray the whole kesha, oh God change my husband. You said he is a subua, he will remain to be troublesome. If you say I am poor man, mudeni wagai, I am a poor man, you will remain poor even if you are the best giver. Because you don't know the law of talking, the law of giving. You can pray and fast until you become a dedicated giver. Give and it shall be given. Simple mathematics, my friend. Whosoever soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. It is your responsibility to raise your financial level. It is not God's responsibility. I'm telling you that what I've practiced for several years. And for over 10 years, I have lived a debt-free life. God told me when he called me into full-time ministry, never borrow. Debts have killed many pastors. Debts have brought pastors into hospitals with high blood pressure. You know, stress. Stomach cancers, God told me, believe me and walk in the faith that I will show you. You will never lack, you will never borrow, you will never beg. I've lived that from 2006. 
I'm giving you a testimony because I don't preach things. I have no con. That's why I speak with a conviction because I have lived divine health. I have seen divine healing. I've walked in kingdom, victory and prosperity. Prosperity doesn't mean I have millions in the bank. It means I have money enough for myself to pay all my bills and I have more to bless others, to bless the work of God and to help those who God brings my way. That's what prosperity is. It goes beyond meeting your needs. May God bless you. The last point I want to say is that faith, genuine Bible faith takes, does not take no for an answer. Come on, this is so, so powerful. Faith that you cannot tell faith God will not come. You cannot tell Bible faith that God will not help you. Genuine faith does not take no for an answer. That was demonstrated in Matthew 15 from verse 22 to 28. The Syrophoenician woman or the Canaanite woman went to Jesus. The Bible says Jesus told her, I was not sent to Canaanites, I was sent to Israelites. But she pressed on. She, she had not come to be told no. Oh, my friend, faith does not take no for an answer. I wish you can record that. Every time you agree, I cannot be healed. That is not Bible faith. Every time you believe my business will collapse, it cannot be saved. That is not Bible faith. Faith does not take no for an answer. Faith does not take no for an answer. The woman went to the disciples. He, she tried to plead with them, Oh, can I talk to the master? And they told the master, Tell this woman to go. She is troubling us. But the Bible says she went back to Jesus and worshipped him. Come on now. Oh, Raka Bashoka. Even if you have prayed and nothing is happening, begin to praise God. Even if you have prayed and nothing seems to work, begin to praise him. The, go and read Matthew 15. The Bible says the woman worshipped Jesus until Jesus had softened. And she, Jesus told the woman, you know, it's not very good to give you the bread of children. You know now he softened because worship came, the worship of faith. And now the Bible says, Jesus told the, the woman agreed. She said, yes, I agree. I could be like a dog, but even the dogs eat the crumbs. Give me the crumb, I'll be healed. My daughter will be healed. And the Bible says, Jesus told her in verse 28, great is thy faith, O woman, be it unto you even as you will. That's so powerful. So faith will have its way before God. God does not know how to say no to faith because faith is based on the word of God and God cannot deny his word. May God bless you. It is in levels. The genuine Bible faith, this is the last point, is in levels. You have to understand that. We don't all operate the same level of faith. Some people have no faith. Jesus said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Apostle Paul said, some people have no faith. So you can be faithless. Jesus asked in, Ma, in Luke 18, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Because he knew faith is no easy thing to come by, but if we press on in the word, we will get it. So you can have little faith. Faith is in levels. You can have uh, no faith, little faith, great faith, like the centurion. And that Canaanite woman I've told you about, they had great faith. The Bible says that so, uh, uh, in, in Acts chapter 6, the Bible says Stephen was a man full of faith. So if you can be full of faith, then you can have quarter faith. You can have half faith or three quarter faith. And every time you allow faith to be penetrated by doubt, no matter you have 600 kg faith and three kg doubt, no miracle. Even if you have 20 tons of faith and 3 tons doubt or 3 kg doubt, there is no miracle for you. That's why Jesus said, faith works when it is pure faith, even if it is as little as a mustard seed. If you have a faith as little as a mustard seed, but it's simple faith, no doubt at all, your miracle is assured. Your miracle is guaranteed. The Bible says that uh, Abraham was strong in faith. Romans chapter 4, verse 22 down. He was strong in faith. He was not a weakling in faith. May God bless you. Thank you for all those who have been following us. Pastor John Mwangi, my covenant brother, may God bless you so much. Uh, Siko Lawrence, my daughter, God bless you. 
uh, Simon Kenya, to all the others who have uh, followed us and all the others who are watching the sharings, may God bless you. I am Pastor Ruben Duo. Uh, if you want to uh, to contact me, maybe for prayers, my number is 0724108589. I'm based in Nairobi. Uh, 0724108589 for prayers and uh, any assistance you would like me to assist you spiritually. You have a question. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want us to pray because I want to pray that. I want to pray you a very specific prayer. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And I know that the Bible says in Proverbs that the hearing ear and the seeing eye, it is God who gives you the it is God who gives you the ability to hear him. It is God who gives you the ability to hear him. So I want to pray that God will open your spiritual eyes so that you may hear from heaven and so that you may receive the grace to have faith in God. I pray that your spiritual ears will open in the name of Jesus, that the word of God, when you read it, it will make sense to you, that from today your spiritual eyes will open to the truth and to the reality that is in the scriptures, that your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. It doesn't matter in what trouble you are, my friend. I declare that God will speak to you. God will give you guidance. You may be having a big mountain. The Bible says in Mark 11, 23, if you have faith and doubt not, you can say to this mountain, remove and be cast into the sea and it shall obey you. Speak to your mountain and do not doubt in your heart. I pray that your ears may hear the voice of God. That when you read the Bible, you will hear another voice. Hearing the voice of faith is reading John, hearing more than what you are seeing in the Bible. If you read the Bible and hear more, you hear the Holy Spirit telling you more than what you are reading on the page. That is the voice that breeds faith. If God can speak to your heart, that he will raise you. If God can show you a dream or a vision, that is a voice of God. Faith comes by hearing God at any level. Your faith is going to be enlarged and you are going to work, work in the miraculous. I pray that every problem that you are going through, God will give you the grace to access the responsibility to have faith. Because I said faith is human responsibility. So that you can command your mountain. And I believe that your mountain is going to be moved. For all of you who have watched us, may God bless you. May God extend your coasts. May God raise you to the next level. May your faith be buoyant in the name of Jesus. May you continue to trust and believe God. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We believe all that Psalm 91 says, that we are hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. It is a real thing, it's not an imagination. And the Bible says God will save us from the deadly pestilence. So COVID-19 is not our portion. You don't look at who is dying and how many people we are mentioned and we are announced by the Ministry of Health. Faith does not listen to the world, it listens to the Word of God. I told you that faith believes the Word of God, not the facts. Faith is the truth and truth changes the facts. In Jesus' name, may God bless you. I'm Pastor Ruben. Shalom, shalom. And see you next time when God gives me this opportunity. Pastor Waisnyaga, my brother, God bless you. I don't know what to say. May God increase uh, your territory because of giving me this opportunity to uh, minister on this platform of mentees of Archbishop uh, Harrison Nganga, who is our spiritual father. We love him. We pray for him that God may continue to use him to teach the word of faith and holiness to every believer. May God bless you. Shalom. God bless you. Amen.